I've travelled the length and breadth of Britain to meet the men and women who keep this country running no matter what. Very good. You love this job, don't I you? I do. I'm passionate about my job. In this series, I'll be working alongside hidden heroes in the jobs that never stop. From the people who keep us moving. You just don't seem phased by anything. To the people who keep us fed. Lovely. And the ones making sure the lights stay on. You can instantly feel the heat. As I work alongside them, I'll be asking, could I do what they do? Oh, my God. What? What in the world? <laughs> Love it. And I'll be shining a light on the extraordinary operations that we all rely on to keep our world working. If you want any more help, let me know. All right. I'm Dom Littlewood. Welcome to Dom Digs In. Finally, I feel like a superhero. This time on Dom Digs In, I'll be taking to the high seas. Would you mind starting the engines, please? Ferrying passengers. Morning. And freight on the crucial ferry link between Northern Ireland and the UK mainland. I've just parked my first tracting unit. Right. I'll be learning the ropes from the foulest, darkest depths. It stinks, it's smelly, it's claustrophobic. I couldn't think of anything worse. To the very top of the tree. Wow. Fake space age. Isn't it just? Welcome to the future. But can I keep things shipshape? If you have one of these in your own house, I'll be mopping the floor every day. Or will I end up all at sea? Everything you said it was, but worse. In one of the UK's most important transport infrastructure operations. I've got a feeling I'm acting big. This is bad. These days, we're all taking more holidays here in the UK. And travelling by ferry around the British Isles is an increasingly attractive option. Ferries are also a key part of our transport network for all kinds of essential goods. So I've come to Britain's busiest port for domestic shipping, Belfast Harbour, where a dedicated workforce is committed to keeping the flow of holidaymakers, business travellers and freight moving smoothly. But have I got what it takes to work on the country's most popular ferry route? Britain has always been a seafaring nation. Surrounded by water, much of our success has been built on our ability to navigate the globe. Perhaps less appreciated, though, is the importance of shipping within the UK itself. Linking the mainland with Northern Ireland, the Isle of Man, the Shetland Islands in the north and the Channel Islands in the south. This is the third time I've been to Northern Ireland, but not once have I ever made the journey by sea. But all that is about to change. And I brought me out because it's freezing. My guide for the next few days is Howard Hillis, Stellar Lines Operations Manager here in Northern Ireland. A father of two, Howard's worked at Belfast Harbour for the last 21 years. Morning, you must be Howard. Yeah, and you're Dom. Yes. Pleased to meet you. I've been waiting Likewise. on you. Likewise. Have you? So you're here for a bit of work? Yeah, I've got to be honest, I'm really looking forward to this one. I love a bit of boating. Are you ready to go? Without a doubt. You okay, lead the way. there's no time to waste. OK. Let's go. OK, Dom. Um, this is your amenities building. Yep. OK, this is where you're, you'll be able to get chains and whatnot. You've been doing various roles within your stay with us. Um, this will be your uniform. You'll have overalls. Right. And you'll have... Uh, steel toe caps. Okay. okay. Yep. Safety is a priority. Shirt, tie, trousers, belt, nice, smart, neat uniform. Okay. Um, that's when you're customer facing. You'll be dealing with people all day. Keep yourself smart. Yep. And keep a smile. Yep. Um, last but not least, your terminal suicide uniform. Okay. Okay. High vis, hard hat. I feel like you almost sent me off to boarding school here. All, all, all we can no, set it's, out it's, for me. It's all very relevant for the business and for what we do. Time to go out on key. Okay. So you need your hard hat, high vis mm -hmm. coat at the minute. Right. Put that on. Yep. And remember, be vigilant. I will. Let's go. It is forecast for bad weather though, isn't it? Out onto the quayside of the historic Belfast Harbour. The Titanic was built here, and its shipping legacy stretches back over 400 years. Okay, Tom, so uh, here we are, Victoria Terminal 4. Yep in the heart of Belfast Harbour Estate. We operate seven vessels out of Belfast on a daily basis. 7,000 sailings a year, about 1.6 million passengers and about 380,000 cars. And as you can see now, our next challenge is coming in, Dom. We've got to get her out of here again in an hour and 40 minutes. Is that all? 
That's all. Well, it's so completely unloaded, reloaded. Completely unloaded and reloaded. Wow. I've got to say, Howard, as that's creeping in now, very close to me, an off massive, isn't it? Yeah, well, you don't, you don't appreciate the size of these things until you're right up beside them. Yeah. While I'm with you over the next few days, tell me what you expect from me. I'll expect you to be dedicated to what you do. Listen to what you're told. Observe. And, of course, I'll expect you here on time. Yes. Every time. Yeah. And it's going to be a tough few days for me, isn't it? Oh, well, you're not here to sit on your backside, are you? <laughs> you put that quite well, Howard. With my induction complete, I'll be getting an early night. It'll be all hands on deck tomorrow morning, and I need to be back here to meet the ferry at 6am. Another morning getting up in the dark. Today, they give me a uniform, so I've got a nice crisp white shirt on. They've asked me to look neat and tidy and smart and respectable. That'll be a first. Morning, Howard. Morning, Dom. How are you this morning? All right, thanks. Yep. Are you ready for a challenge today really? on board the ferry? Yes, I'm all uniformed up. Look at me. OK, good man. You look very smart. Let's go. Right. I feel like I'm going to meet the judge. In fact, I'm about to join the crew on board the Stanner Estrid. I'll be working alongside them, then overnighting on board, just like they do. Hi, good morning. Morning, Dave. Good morning. Hey, right. Good morning, gentlemen. This is Dom. Hey, Dom. Hi. You all right? Welcome on board the Astrid. You'll have a great Dom. day. Yes, I'll see you tomorrow morning. Thanks, Howard. OK, okay. all the best. Cheers. All around us, the harbour is buzzing with activity. Holiday makers and other passengers are boarding the ferry, as well as lorry loads of essential supplies heading for the UK mainland. No sooner on board, I'm immediately summoned to the bridge to meet the captain. As regular passengers, you or I would never normally be allowed in this area. Time to find out if I can keep up with a deck officer's non-stop schedule. Wow. Hi there, Martin. I'm, I'm Fraser. I'm captain. Oh, nice to be here. Give you a social nice distance. Nice to meet you, captain. Welcome aboard the Senna Estrid. This Dom, is impressive, isn't it's not it? Not too bad. It's like space age. Isn't it, Jack? Welcome to the future. Passengers always see what we're wearing, so if you could take your jacket off there. Right. OK, Dom, if you want to pick up the phone and call 2400, it's our engine room number, and ask them to start the engines, please. Morning, gentlemen. Would you mind starting the engines, please? Thank you very much. Job done. A very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name's Captain Fraser Matthew. It's my pleasure to welcome you aboard East Stena Estrid for this all 730 crossing from Belfast to Loch Ryan Port. Fraser started out as a cadet when he left school back in 2005. But it's now been four years since he first stepped up as captain. And I do hope you enjoy the crossing with us on the Stena Estrid. OK, Dom, let's just get ready to go, so we'll go out onto the bridge wing. I tell you what, it's, it's crash bang wallop, isn't it? Oh, it's, it's unbelievable. OK, Dom, if you can tell four and a half to let go, four and a half, please let go. Four, four and a half, please let go. All lines, clear forward. All clear forward. OK, Dom, if you repeat, swinging clear aft at 60 metres. Swinging clear aft at 60 metres, six zero. You can see Scotland already, it's such a beautiful day. Is that Scotland, aren't yep, you? Yeah, that's it. Wow, very clear visibility. At this point, what's the biggest pain for you? Is it, is it small sailing vessels, fishermen? In the channel pots? here, it's large commercial traffic. When we get further away, out into the bay, we do get a lot of small pleasure craft sailing yachts. Some of them do get a very big shock when they see a big, large ship bearing down yeah. on them. OK, take the wheel in the middle, please, Jimmy. Steady she goes. Zero, four, two, please. This is amazing to think that, you know, you guys here, are, you are steering a block of flats, aren't you? On yes. its side. Yep, that's right. Yeah. That's about 30,000 tonne. So we'll just keep an eye on this tug and tow. She said that she's going to wait till we're clear. All this technology, I'm surprised you haven't got a button to push the blinds down. Well, I'm sure it was an option or extra. We see fairers like to keep it simple. Yeah, fair enough. OK, if you want to tell Belfast Harbour Radio, once it's clear, uh, we'll be number two boy out uh, and we're passing north of the fairway. North of? The, the fairway fair boy. Belfast Radio, uh, Stella Estrid, uh, passing boy number two uh, and on their way past the fairway. North of the fairway. North of the fairway. Thank you. They must be thinking that captain up there, isn't he? <laughs> he's a bit tired this morning. He's not got it quite right. As we leave Belfast Lock, I can start to see why 70% of Northern Ireland's coastline is a designated area of outstanding natural beauty. Just 
13 miles from Scotland at its closest point, the crossing from Belfast to Cairn Ryan takes just over two hours. Dolphins, seals, turtles, whales, and even some species of shark frequent Irish waters. In stormy weather, waves in the Irish Sea can reach over three stories high. But on a day like today, it's plain sailing for Captain Fraser and the crew. Fraser, can I just ask how old you are and how long have you been doing this for? So I'm 33 years of age uh, and uh, I've been at sea since I was 18, so that's probably why I've got so many grey hairs. 15 years at sea now. OK, Dom, so we're just coming uh, up to Coswell Point. This is when we start preparing for our arrival into port, so we'll have to start getting the bridge gear ready for our arrival now. Right. An easy round to 080, please. 080. With the Scottish coast approaching fast, it's time to find out if I can get to grips with how to bring this 215-metre-long ship safely into harbour. OK, now we've also got to do is you've just got to bring the uh, engines from flat out just back a little bit. So you want to pull it just slightly back, back to about seven. So that's enough. What Perfect. would be the worst nightmare for you right now, Fraser? Uh, oh. Probably a water skier coming across or something, wouldn't water it? Water skier, they, they bounce off the side. <laughs> um, bigger ships like that, if we don't know when they suddenly come out, maybe if we lost all power. Oh. You just got to get up with the engine room, tell them that it was uh, 32 for standby. Engine room, please. 32 for standby, please. Both bow thrusters are now available. Both thrusters are available. Thank you very much. Cheerio. Bye. So now what you see is they're coming to the entrance of Loch Ryan. Yep. Uh, so up ahead you'll see two flashing white lights and that's our berth in Loch Ryan. And uh, we'll go starboard to 145, please. 145. In order to give us more room, we're going to swing around to starboard here and then we'll just drive in her in a comfortable position there. It's all going well? Yep, all good. Sun shining, Dom. Well, yeah. brilliant. You just don't seem phased by anything. I don't like the gang, mate. What are you like at parking a car? Ah, uh, not to the best. <laughs> <laughs> so the moment we're just matching up our, our mark with the key site. So you are visually lining up your stop mark through that window there? Yep, and then we can also see how quick we're moving. Using a glass floor, Captain Fraser can see his exact position and work out where he needs to be by lining up marks on the window with marks on the key side. Half a metre. Steady on the fender. OK, operations, both mooring arms engaged. OK, take the power off. Yeah. And that's one passage done, Dom, but I'm afraid you have to get your skates on because we're due out of here in an hour and 20 minutes at 11.30 again. Thank you, Fraser. You made it look easy. <laughs> I know it's not, but you did make it look that way. <laughs> it's a nice day. Thank you very much, Dom. <laughs> Thanks, Fraser. Uh, fresh shirt, waistcoat. I'm now off to do my bit in customer services where I'm probably hopefully going to get to meet some customers. Passenger numbers on this route are booming, up 6% in the last year alone. And I want to know if I've got what it takes to join the crews that keep 1.3 million people a year happy. Dave. How you doing? Hi, yeah. right. Yes, ready for my next induction. No worries. I'll show you exactly what we're going to be wearing. Dave, I've also been given a waistcoat. Do I need to put this on? You will do. That's right. part of our uniform and our uniform standards on board. Why are you wearing one? So, because I'm on board manager, oh, we like to stand right. out a little bit different. Makes it easier for the guests to know who to, who to turn to. Yeah, who to shout at. Who to shout at, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Do you want to come on through and I'll get you on your first task then this morning? Come on then. We don't use a mop and bucket on here. We've got the machine, so my colleague's going to show you exactly how you're going to use this. Right. Hello. Hi, Dom. Hello, okay. So, you get stand Dom on there. Uh, and I'll just talk you through the controls. So here, you press start. Yep. OK. Right. There's your accelerators, both Over sides. Down. Yeah. Yep. It's like... I'm with you. Yeah. So just take it gently. Yep. Slowly, that way. It's just a bit like when you go to the fairground, you go to the bumper cars. I just wish there was some more so we could actually nudge each other out of the way. Go on. Get out of the way. Look at that. If you had one of these in your own house, honestly, I'd be mopping the floor every day. Don't worry, darling. I'll do the lounge. Perhaps 
I should stick to bumper cars after all. Fortunately, no harm done. And with the deck swabbed, it's time to get passengers on board for our return to Belfast. Morning. Morning. Good morning. Hi, welcome. Hi, good morning. Hi there, welcome. How you doing? You right? Morning. Hi, are we? Good morning. Good morning, guys. Hi there, welcome on board. Good morning. That's very kind of you. <laughs> He's taking everybody's ah, coffee. Yes, sir. She was going to give it to me. Good morning, welcome on board. Morning. Thank you very much. Morning. It's OK. Morning. Yeah, right, hi, good morning. Is that everybody? Should be. Gangway clear, gate secure. Inside? Inside. Now to make sure that newly arrived passengers of all shapes and sizes are able to settle in. Morning. Hi. How are you doing? Where are the kennels, please? Where are the kennels, Steve? Straight down. We'll go down and get a coat, and I will show you it. Dom, do you want to take the lead down to guest services? Certainly, yes. Don't. Come this way, okay. sir. We'll come with you. Under Steve's expert supervision, I'll be a sea dog in no time. What's his name? Ted. Ted. You all right, Ted? So, we need to put the code in, yeah? Why can't the dogs just stay with their owners? Uh, we've got lots of food areas on board and we, we do get lots of people objecting to dogs being in food areas and obviously there's the hygiene side of it. OK. Yeah, thank you. And you've got the Thanks, key, you've got the code. Thanks, yeah. yeah, OK. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Now, who says you can't teach an old dog new tricks? Another happy customer. Yeah. It's full steam ahead. And with the passengers making themselves at home, things seem to be running smoothly as we make our way back to Belfast. Don't be afraid to do a bit, meow. Well, OK. <laughs> Itching to get me back into action, my taskmaster, Dave, takes me down to the accommodation deck to help make sure passengers can get their heads down in comfort. Hiya, oh, yeah? you all right? So I'm Marianne. Marianne, hello. Stuart Marianne comes from a seafaring family. All three of her sons work on board ships, and once they flew the nest, she decided to join them. This is one of the most busiest jobs on the ship, Dom, just trying to get all these ready. You got to turn yeah, bet. Yeah. So this is a freight cabin. So someone's had this for the last two and a half hours, correct? Yes, so... Yeah. The Estrid boasts 175 cabins, and each one has to be cleaned and sanitised after every use. Right, so this is our fogging machine. Mm-hmm. We'll take it in. Uh... You disinfect every cabin after it's been used, yeah? Yes. That's one disinfected cabin, nine. Okay, so, and every time that cabin's used, you do that? Yes. Yeah, so, that is yeah. a non-stop job, then, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it is. We have a good team and a good system, so we all sort of work a lot. Muck in. Yeah. After Marianne's demo, that's one down, another 80 to do. Time for me to get stuck in. Another one bites the dust. <laughs> Kills 99% of all, all known germs. I hope it don't kill TV presenters. <laughs> Fast and it's another speedy turnaround. In no time at all, we're leaving Ireland in our wake once again. This is the fastest sea route for holidaymakers crossing the Irish Sea. And as we arrive back into Scotland's Loch Ryan for the second time today, it's not hard to understand why it's so popular. It's a beautiful day. There's a very, very strong wind on the side here, but all I can see now from right down the far end of the ship, well, as far as the eye can see, is just beautiful scenery. It's hills, it's little cottages, the waves smashing against the rock. Scotland is a stunning country. This porch is Ken Ryan, this is Loch Ryan, and everywhere you look, beautiful scenery, hills on this side, landscape over there, it's so romantic. 
much as I'd love to be here on holiday, even in port, there's work to be done. It's the bosun, Steve, who runs things on deck. And with the boat safely berthed, he wants to find out if I can handle myself around some heavyweight action. OK, I'm going to pop underneath there. The ship's anchors weigh over six tons each. They are needed here at the quayside, but have to be ready in a moment's notice in case the ship gets into trouble anywhere near the coast. So it's essential to check that everything's working. OK, Dom. We've got two sets of controls here. This drives the winch. Yep. And a second set of controls. This is the brake controls. Once the brake releases, gravity will take hold. A few tons of weight there, isn't there? It's quite a lot, and it's noisy, and it's going to be smelly. We'll press this button first. Press lift the flap. Yes, let anchor go. For bursts of three seconds, okay. you just hold on to it for three seconds. Let go. And again. And again. Crikey, I really dropped a clanger there. But what goes down must come back up. I do hope this winch is working, or it could be a long stop over here in Cairn Ryan. We're on the port side. So if you press start, the anchor is starting to come up back. Father of two, Steve, met his wife while working on a cruise ship. And after nine years as an able seaman on ferries, has just been promoted to bosun. We put a lot of train out, Steve. We did. Steve seems like an ace anchor man, but with this anchor and chain weighing a whopping 33 tons combined, there's no chance whatsoever we could hoist it ourselves. OK, and that's right. the anchor away. Is it? Anchor's all safe. Cheers, Steve. Right. Fuck out. It's 6 p.m. and my 12-hour shift is coming to an end. But like the rest of the crew, I'll be spending the night on board. And this evening, I'm dining in the crew mess at the captain's table. So, Dom, this is where we come to actually have a wee bit of downtime and have something nice to eat. So, we want to grab a plate. Yep. Help yourself to some of the food, whatever you need. Get stuck in. So, we've got sweet potatoes, chicken burgers. You need to hurry up, because I'm starving. OK. <laughs> right, I'll have a chicken burger. How come I'm going first? Are you just being polite? I'm just being nice today, yeah. Okay. It's usually captain first. <laughs> well, that's what I would have thought. He's last today. As long as you leave some for me. I've got to say, that's not a bad bit of chucker. I'm looking forward to that. So grab a seat there. Oh. Oh. Just watch, she's rocking a bit. Yeah, did you feel it there? Did you feel that one? Did you? Yeah. <laughs> well, exactly. So at this present point, we're halfway between Scotland and Belfast. Yeah. Who's steering the ship? The minute the uh, handed over command of the ship to uh, Captain James Shaw from seven at night until seven in the morning. If anything happens, then we all need all six of us and all the crew that are in bed during the day, they'll be up to help deal yeah. with any emergency. You never know when you're going to get a call. It could be two in the morning, so we always make sure, particularly for, for us, we have a uniform hanging up because, exactly. you know, Dave would be facing passengers in an emergency even if it's two, three in the morning. If something terrible happened, you've got to be the last person off the ship, haven't you? Mm -hmm. I think you have a moral obligation. I think all captains say that. And we are responsible for the care of all passengers and crew on board. If you had to, for whatever reason, have a change of career, mm -hmm. what would you choose? It's a good one. I've always dreamed of having a... After this, maybe starting up my own bed and breakfast or something like that. Because I do see every time a passenger comes on to whatever ship I'm on, it's like they're stepping onto our home. So I'm doing that already, mm -hmm. but I'll do it on a smaller scale as I get older. I always wanted to do this job, I think. If I, I definitely would have picked the career sea still, um, even if I had the choice again. Assume you're a child and they come to you and they say, Dad, I'm thinking about following in your footsteps. What would you say genuinely to them? If they wanted to, then yes. But some people, if they've not got any interest in the career, it can be like living in a prison. Within 24 hours of a person coming on board, I can see whether they're going to make it or break it. You just know. You just know. My parents actually travelled on the ship yesterday. That's for right, the, yeah. For the first time ever. They must be years. very proud. Well, the first thing she said was, you need to polish your shoes before tomorrow. <laughs> so, <laughs> Did she really? she's, always, yeah. she's always your mother. Well done, it's getting really late now, as I'm sure you appreciate it. it's been a long, long yeah. day, busy day. Yeah. Uh, but tomorrow's another early start. We'll be down there for 5.30. Thanks, Chairman. It's been no a great problem. day. Thank you. I'll be spending the night in the crew's quarters. They work on board for two weeks at a time, 
then have two weeks at home before their next shift begins. Yep, I'm happy enough with this. This will do for me. Right, it's an early start. See you in the morning. Coming up, I'll be manning the car deck on the busy Belfast turnaround. OK, sweeping driver down there. Sparks fly when I show up at the drawing dock. Hop back, I'll have it done for you. Hope so. Yeah. And I turn my hands to one of the dirtiest, most disgusting jobs on the ship. Oh, God, Benny. The stink is unbearable. 5.30 in the morning. Ouch. The ship's back in Belfast, and my first job of the day is to open the car deck door. So if you can push the toggle switch all the way to open and keep it held up. One door open, but can I convince the deck crew I've got what it takes to help offload a ferry full of cars and freight and hit their tight turnaround schedule? OK, and that's it, fully open. Ah, the fresh morning air. 5.30. Belfast. And it's nippy. Have you ever had a situation where someone's still in bed and they, they don't get up to get yeah, to the car? Yeah, we do. Particularly on the nighttime crossings, yeah, we have people who don't return to their cars. How's you done that? We have to give them a wake-up call, <laughs> send someone round to knock on their cabin. Now we're ready to start discharging the cars. Yep. So if you'd like to follow me. Time to get things moving round here. Now right. you can start to wave these guys forward. OK, sweeping driver down there. Yep, just keep waving them, that's it. Start to wave him forward, just take a step okay. back. And start to wave him forward. It's crucial to offload the car decks evenly or the ship could tilt dangerously in the water. There's another one behind yep. you. And then wave the next, wave Which him one? there forward. Is that for the balance? Yeah. Once fully discharged, we can load the trailers for the next crossing. You're going to use the simple come towards me signal yep. for reversing it back. Here we go. And give him a wave. This may be the middle of the night for me, but Orange in his element. When not working on ships, he spends his nights DJing in pubs and clubs. OK, Tom, so we'll get you now to take this trestle yep. and push it in underneath. Happy? You get a flush landing like so. Perfect. I'll just park my first tractor unit. But in rough Irish seas, these trailers need to be chained to the deck to keep them in place. Now, this is where the fun bit of the job really begins. You find your chain to the hook, put your bottle screw into the deck, and we'll secure it by putting the drill. OK. That is going nowhere. Easy. But now Oren wants to put my newfound skills to the test. OK, Tom, I'm going to give you a challenge. We're both going to start in this position, and it's going to be a challenge to see who can secure the trailer to the deck the quickest. OK, I'm up for that. So what does the captain want? You cheated. You ran round. <laughs> Very good. Trailers loaded, and as passengers make their way on board, there'd be chaos on the car deck if it wasn't for Oren and his team. So I want to bring their front wheel up to about here, yep? Yeah. OK. And that's nice and okay. safe to see. OK, John. Yep. We've got the car deck secure, ground up in position. We're going to have to get you out of here really quickly, or you're going to end up travelling back to Scotland, unfortunately. PDQ, pretty damn quick. Yeah, let's okay. get yourself out of here, man. Show me the way off, mate. That's what you've got. Cheers, Alden. Finally back on dry land, and as the Stena Estrid sets sail for Scotland once again, 
I've been sent to assist with another crucial side of a ferry line's operations. The essential maintenance of a ship in dry dock. The celebrated Harland and Wolf dockyards have a proud shipbuilding past and have launched hundreds of ships, from aircraft carriers and super tankers to the world famous Titanic. The iconic gantry cranes are Belfast landmarks. Named after the biblical strongmen Samson and Goliath, when built, they were the biggest freestanding cranes in the world. Time to see if I've got what it takes to help keep the ships of today running smoothly. And this feels like a totally different ball game. There's something about those cranes which to me, like something from War of the Worlds, they're stunning. That's engineering at its best. Fire. You in? Nice to meet you in. Good to see you. I'm the operation volunteer. We've got you start. We'll get you started. Get you down onto the job. Right, straight in at the deep end, eh? That's it. That's right. where. That's where we go. Well, I'm ready to go, Ian. Well, Ian's been working here all his life and started out as a fitter back in 1979. I'll tell you what. That is stunning, isn't it? It's like the biggest bathtub in the world with a plug out. Gee, it takes about two hours to fill and five hours to empty. What sort of repairs will your guys be doing to it? Just like your motor. You have yep. to change bits and pieces, things go wrong from yeah. time to time. And what qualifies you guys to be doing work on these ships? Harlands is 160 years old. We have about 22,000 uh, repair vessels through Harlands since it's opened. I myself, I've been working here 41 years. Man and boy, I've got... My, my father worked here, my grandfathers, etc. Like a whole lot of guys here. Um, You've been we, here since leaving school then? Yes. What's the worst part of the job, as far as you're concerned? There's none. I love the job. This, this job's brilliant. Wow, 41 years here. And both his grandfathers worked here too. These really are the people who keep this country afloat. And I can't wait to get started. You all right, guys? I'll tell you what... Once you get up close, you just realise what a, what a beast she is, isn't she? This ship, the Superfast 8, was built in 2001. Well looked after, she could easily see 40 years of service in the Irish Sea. I'm hoping in my life this is the only time I'm ever underneath one of these. <laughs> when you're here, you suddenly get an idea of the enormity of this ship. The rudders are massive. I mean, look at that propeller. It's the size of a car park, practically. The ship's hull needs regular maintenance to keep it sound. And my first job is welding these fresh anodes to the ship's giant rudder. Ready? These blocks of metal attract corrosion, ensuring the ship's steel hull stays in good shape. But anodes need to be regularly replaced. I'd like to actually have a go at the, doing the welding. We'll get through to tack it on. Yep. And then we'll let you have a go at the weld. Sounds good to me. Well, I'll have a big boy mask now, yeah? Right, let's see how it fits. I have tried welding before, but Grandfather Ken started out here 46 years ago. I can't believe he's letting me attach this for real to the actual working ferry. How was that? Perhaps OK. Bottom a wee bit ropey. We'll hand you back the end. He's a bit of work for you on right. board. Right. you doke. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Joe, if I ever see super fast eight crossing the Irish Sea, I'd about to say, do you know what? I welded one of the anodes on that. Yes. I'll tell you what, Ian. I will give it a six out of ten. Oh, that's good. That's a good improvement. We'll try and get some use out of you. Like everyone else around here, it seems I'm starting at the bottom and working my way up. It's like walking up a treadmill. Up on the car deck, the steel team are replacing a section of flooring and they want me to take over from Jock, real name Norman, on the grinder. You can do the whole lot, Don. Ah, listen, I'll have a good go for you, Jock. Tell me what you want me to do. Well, if you stand there, Hold it like that. It's just nice and easy. You go and get yourself a nice cup of tea, have yourself a chocolate biscuit, pop back, I'll have it done for you. I hope so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm grinding off paint around the edges so this new section of flooring can be welded into the car deck. 32,000 people are employed in the UK steel industry. And just like the rest of us, they depend on guys like Jock who can work this metal into the structures we rely on. Okay, go on. Yeah. I think you've done enough there. Jock, what would you say? He's... He can start tomorrow if he, he wants. He can start tomorrow, yeah. Real we'll pay's not very good, but you can start. I'm not going to say no to anything. Okay, don't okay, no take problem. Take care, mate. Bye-bye. Now to meet the main man. Dom, this is the captain, Captain Steve. Dom. Captain Steve, lovely. Captain doing? Steve nice to meet Miller. You. Welcome on board. Captains here retain command of their ship even while it's in dry dock. What am I doing now then? Seeing as how you're the new, new boy in the ship, you get the dirtiest job, I'm afraid. Right. You're gonna Look at him smiling. You're Look, gonna love I'm it. Laughing. <laughs> He's laughing as well. Come on in. Right. Come on in. Let's go. Let's go for a walk. Feeling, I'm acting big. This is bad. Steve's been a captain for the last six years, but has worked in and around ships for nearly three decades. But this time, we're not heading for the bridge. He's taking me down to the very lowest level of this enormous ship. I'm still not sure what you're going to get me doing, but already the stink down here is not making me feel good. Even he's laughing. I'm going to hand you over to Dylan. All right, Dylan, what's going on? All right, bud, we're going to take it down in the crossover tank. Get the weights on. Keep it nice and clean. OK. I've no idea what a crossover tank is, but the fact I've got to wear this suit is not filling me with confidence. Right, look after him. Oh, well, don't worry, don't worry. You know, I get claustrophobic. And he's a slim lad, and he's a struggle to get in there. There's a ladder, yeah. Ladder on your left foot. Oh, God, Benny. <laughs> Alright? Smell nice? Yeah, oh. <laughs> Obviously, out at sea, all this muck and shell and crabs and everything gets pumped in with the water. And if you look closely, I'll get it for you. I never liked them. Crabs! There's a live one for you. There we go. Look. That's a baby. This has got to be one of the worst jobs in the world. You're on your own, it stinks, it's smelly, it's claustrophobic, it's dark. There's live crabs running around you. I couldn't think of anything worse. We spent too long talking, Don, and it needs done, so there's your shovel. Seawater gets sucked through these tanks to keep the engines cool. If Dylan wasn't down here to clear them out, the cooling system would clog up, and an overheated engine at sea could spell disaster. The stink is unbearable. If you imagine all that now is rotting, fermenting, fish, crabs, oysters, you name it. And you all know how strong a fishmonger smell. Times that by 50, I can actually feel my stomach at the moment is holding back. I could very easily just let rip here, you know that, Dylan? <laughs> you're laughing because you're OK with us, you're used to it. Right, the sooner I crack on and get this down, the sooner I'm out there into some fresh air. Come on, get stuck in. Oh, look, there's another crab. Get out of it. Oh, some of it's just dripped inside me welly now. Ugh, I just feel dirty. It may be a grotty job, but this is the hard graft that has to be done to keep these ferries running smoothly. That's so heavy, if I put any more in, it's going to rip. We're going to need to get that out, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, 100%. Um, I'll get paid up. If you want to jump off, um, we'll get it out. Hey, you jump up. It's careful to get out. Where did it all go wrong? I used to present holiday programmes in the sunshine. You were not wrong, and that was very cruel. <laughs> it's everything you said it was, but worse. That's what worse, yeah, I know. I've never been so glad to smell fresh air in my life. Steve, I'd like to say it's been a pleasure, but I'd be lying. That was horrible. <laughs> Why do you, you know, the fresh air now in the rain is, you know, it makes up for it, doesn't it? I did tell you it was going to be rough. You did, yeah. And you but to be right. fair, oh, you've uh, pulled your weight today. Steve, thanks for your time today. Really, really appreciate no it. Problem, Good luck with your sailing. Catch Cheers, you later mate. on. All the best. Bye bye. After 24 hours on board ship and a tough shift at the dockyard, all I want to know now is how did I do? Time for my evaluation with Howard. 
Well done. Yep. Your experience with us is coming to an end. How was the experience for you? I've really liked it. I've enjoyed it. The camaraderie was amazing. The, it, everything is so fast-paced. You're stopping, you're starting, you're stopping, starting, having a little rest, and then the same thing again. Time just flies by. You got a rest? Oh, it wasn't long. It wasn't long. It was enough for half a cup of tea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, rest isn't something we get a lot of in this oh, business, right. you know? It's constant, constant. Yeah. You had a turn on the bridge. How did that work out for you? Oh, I blossomed. I do feel that's where my forte probably lies. Uniform, officer, in charge, top deck. Yeah, everybody knows what they'd like to do. I did have Belfast Harbour Radio on. There's protocol when ships are coming into port and leaving mm. port. And I think, from what I'm hearing, you struggled a little bit with that. And I believe you're on the car deck, yeah. And, and keen as usual to get mucked in with the guys. Yep. And, th and that's, that's admirable. It's always a good trait to have, yes. you know, yeah. getting involved. I mean. Uh, and that's what we look for in a lot of our staff there. They're always keen and always want to get involved, always wanting to do more. Next, we sent you around to the, the dry dock, and you also went to the, the dirty villages. It's not nice. Someone has to do it. Yeah. It's good that you've taken on these tasks. So if I applied for a job here, Howard, you know, would you be prepared to offer me one? Well, let's not go down that route too quick. I mean, I think, yes, certainly uh, in some areas, maybe on our onboard services end of things. I was thinking more fast track to officer. Status. Oh, right, right. You want to go straight to the top. Yep. Mm, very few people in this world do that. But listen, there's always room for improvement. Yes. And someone as determined as you, I think, could possibly make the grade. And I think, to encourage you, we'd like to make you an honorary captain. It gives me great pleasure to give you this captain's hat. Do you know what? I feel honoured. Howard, I'm going to wear this with pride, and I'd just like to say I have so much respect for everybody in this industry, from the people in the dockyard to people on the boat, the professionalism, the camaraderie, the, the work and the exams and the dedication they have to give. You know, they're doing an amazing job. And on that note, I'd just like to say, if the hat fits, wear it. I won't be needing that one anymore, Howard. Thanks for having me. Good luck, Don. Thanks. Ciao. To coin a nautical expression, this has been pretty much full steam ahead from the get-go, and I liken it a little bit to a Swiss clock, where every single cog, regardless of its size, has to fit in precisely. Because these are the people in the ships that are keeping things moving across the seas, transporting things from one part of the UK to the other. It's a full-on job with big responsibility, and I've got to say, I'm really chuffed to have experienced it.